There's life after Mythbusters, especially for Adam Savage, who now gets to live a life of building cool stuff and messing around all day while somehow still making a pretty tidy living from it. So, what has Adam Savage been up to since Mythbusters? Keep watching to find out. For Mythbusters Jr., Savage has replaced his old co-host, the stalwart uber-serious Jamie Heineman, with a bunch of teens and preteens. They're not just any teens and preteens, though. They're the sorts of kids who make you reflect on your own life with deep regret and wonder why you weren't building robots, programming computers, shooting off rockets, and inventing other stuff well before you hit puberty. Plus, Savage's new co-hosts seem like they might be at least marginally easier to work with than Heinemann. If nothing else, they at least express occasional emotion. Savage said at the Summer Television Critics Association press tour in 2018, when big things fall on big things, the pure delight on their faces, they can't hide it. That's why we're doing this. But don't let the presence of minors lull you into a false sense of responsible science or anything. It's not a show about teaching these guys how to do stuff. It's not a kid's show. These are the new Mythbusters and I'm their camp counselor and their advisor and sometimes their test subject. They're going to be blowing stuff up just as big as we did. So, just to confirm, the show's premise is to give explosives to children and let them blow stuff up on national television, right? Cool. Adam Savage is the bromance every dude wishes he could have. Imagine hanging out in your workshop and building stupid stuff all day over a six-pack of beer. Heck, even most women probably wish they could have a bromance with Adam Savage. Sadly, the closest you'll probably ever come to being pals with Adam Savage is when you read his book, which has the very relatable title, Every Tool's a Hammer. Because who among us hasn't beaten a doorknob to death with a heavy flashlight just because you locked your keys in the house? One Boing Boing reviewer called Savage's book a wonderful read in which Adam shares his own personal guidelines for creativity from inspiration to execution. So if you've ever wanted to build a giant Totoro costume and all you really need is some inspiration to get started, well, this book might help you out with that. Savage calls the book, quote, a chronicle of my life as a maker, but it's really a love letter to other makers and those of us who want to be makers but still haven't grabbed the airbrush by the trigger. He wrote, Grab hold of the things you're interested in, that fascinate you, and dive deeper into them to see where they lead you. If you follow Savage's activities online, then you probably get the feeling that making, which is essentially just the blanket term for the art of building random cool stuff, is going to one day save the world and all of the universe too. In late 2016, Savage announced a new nonprofit called Nation of Makers, which helps makers share ideas, projects, resources, and whatever else they feel like sharing with the broader maker community. We are a nation of makers, of artists, of sculptors, of writers, of singers, of dancers, explorers, and storytellers. According to Nation of Makers website, the mission is to build a society where everyone has access to the tools, technologies, experiences, and knowledge to make anything. Naturally, Savage is on the board of directors, so the organization is off to a solid start at making the world a better place. Adam Savage is, among other things, a huge fan of sci-fi in general and Blade Runner in particular. And if you're Adam Savage, well, you can do things like call up the studio and say, hey, I want to be an extra. And then the next thing you know, you're on the set of a Blade Runner 2049 short getting ready to play a street merchant in future Los Angeles. In the short, Savage appears in the background just behind Dave Bautista. His character doesn't have any lines, but he can be seen trying to sell bags of blood to a vendor because the Blade Runner universe is gross. But it's not a blink and you'll miss it appearance. Any true Mythbusters fan would be able to identify him without much effort, even if they didn't know in advance he was there. And filmmaking opportunities seem to keep presenting themselves. According to Tested, in 2018, Savage visited Peter Jackson's Weta workshop in New Zealand and made a short film entitled Farewell to Arms, which features himself in a suit of armor and a bright red skirt fighting some weird creature that looks like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer demon mixed with one of the rubber suits from the set of the original Star Trek. After a short battle, the demon removes one of Savage's arms, Monty Python style, complete with gushing blood. The film is presented as a part of a series, and it isn't just an original story with relatively low-budget special effects. It's also a behind-the-scenes look at how Weta Workshop puts together an epic film like Lord of the Rings. 
Both Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman seem to be cool with the end of Mythbusters. After so many seasons of working with someone you don't actually really like that much, it was comfortable for them to finally part ways. But knowing Adam Savage the way we do, it must have been hard for him to put all that geeking out behind him. Because if there's one thing Adam Savage clearly loves to do, it's geeking out in a public forum. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, it's actively moving. Look at that. <laughs> That's probably one of the reasons he signed on to host a 2017 15-part sci-fi podcast called Sci-Fi 25 Origin Stories. The series featured discussions with some legendary names in science fiction, like the voice of Yoda, Frank Oz, Star Trek screenwriter DC Fontana, and writer Ron Moore, who won an Emmy for his work on Battlestar Galactica. So not only did Savage get to spend lots of time talking publicly about science fiction, he got to do it with some of the biggest names in the industry. Savage told Space.com that the series was meant to examine science fiction not just as a genre, but as a cultural force that transcends petty human differences. He said, That's what science fiction has always been to me, a wonderful Trojan horse that bypasses people's partisan filters to talk about culturally important issues. Adam Savage is a mythbuster, a maker, a special effects guy, and now a purveyor of travel accessories. Yes, one of Savage's latest projects is selling bags made out of recycled sails. According to Wired, he designs the bags in collaboration with the San Francisco company called Mafia Bags and markets them under his Savage Industries brand. Wired reports that the recycled sails give each bag, quote, unique quirks as well as a broken-in look. They have magnet closures instead of Velcro or snaps, and a system of springs inside the lip that keeps the bag open while you're rifling around inside it. You can also get a Savage Industries beach tote or cooler. Most of the bags come in white only, presumably because sales also mostly come in white, but there's also a black version of the smaller bag available. Don't be put off by the mostly white options and the dirt that will inevitably and permanently collect on the surface of your $225 bag, though. Savage says the dirt is actually a patina, so it's all good. Even though everyone knows that patina is just a fancy word that antiques dealers use to make their customers feel good about the filth. Savage's biggest post-Mythbusters project is Tested.com, where he serves as editor-in-chief. Tested.com is an online magazine that focuses mostly on scientific topics like nature, exploration, emerging technologies, groundbreaking new products, and Adam Savage being in a Blade Runner short. In case you're not sold yet, here are a few recent examples from the Tested lineup of awesome topics. A video profiling a spacesuit replica builder, another video that follows Savage as he builds a liquid nitrogen-powered engine for a Starbucks video, and yet another video that follows him around while he visits the Space Shuttle Discovery in Dulles, Virginia. It also seems like Savage chronicles many of his activities at the website, meaning you can geek out vicariously through someone who has enough time and money to actually geek out as a profession. If you've missed Adam Savage on Mythbusters and you think all his other projects just can't fill the void, well, you can have the experience of a lifetime at one of his live stage shows. In 2015, Savage launched Tested the Show, which is evidently loosely based on the Tested website. The show debuted at San Francisco's Castro Theater and also ran in 2016 and 2017. It has included an appearance by Simone Getch, otherwise known as the Queen of the Crappy Robots, but is mostly a celebration of multimedia, costuming, and Adam Savage's huge collection of cool stuff. But alas, it seems to have only happened a few times. But wait, according to Boing Boing, there's also The Brain Candy Show, a live touring show billed as crazy toys, incredible tools, and mind-blowing demonstrations for a celebration of curiosity that's an interactive, hands-on, minds-on theatrical experience like no other. Brain Candy wasn't a one-man show. Savage teamed up with YouTuber Michael Stevens for the event that did, in fact, feature explosions. Sadly, it only ran through May 2018, so don't bother frantically googling for tickets. Anyone who's followed Savage even since before he left Mythbusters knows about his Comic-Con tradition. When he attends a big convention, Savage dresses up in a super impressive head-to-toe costume and goes incognito through the crowd though it's kind of easy for people to figure out his identity just based on how awesome his costume is. Over the years, he's been Chewbacca, Hellboy, Kylo Ren, Totoro, and King Arthur, but his most epic costume was the one he spent 14 years and $15,000 building. He told CNBC, That's going to have to be 
Kane's suit from Alien. I replicated John Hurt's spacesuit costume from the movie Alien. All those years he spent on the thing included researching the costume, gathering the pieces to make it, and figuring out how to make it all fit. And Savage isn't just content to build a costume that's almost perfect. He even hired people to help him with the castings and molds. Some of the materials came from as far away as Italy and China. Admittedly, $15,000 is a lot to spend on one costume, but Savage says it helped that it took him so long to actually complete the project. I spread it out over 15 years so it didn't hurt my wallet as bad as it would have in one fell swoop, though. Adam Savage is a dad, and like all dads, he has a special appreciation for kids and young people. So when he decided to undertake a huge project in the celebration of the Apollo 11 moon landing, he recruited 40 different makers from all over the country, including a group of students from Kennedy High in Richmond, California. Together, the group created life-sized replica pieces of an Apollo 11 command module hatch. According to Tested, Savage used 3D scan data and original drawings kept in the Air and Space Museum archives to create a digital model of the hatch. It was then separated into individual components, which were distributed to the 40 makers who helped Savage complete the project. Unlike Savage's other projects, though, there was room for artistic license. The makers were free to create their components in any color or finish as, quote, a celebration of different fabrication techniques, some traditional, some cutting edge. The pieces were sent to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., where Savage assembled them live in front of an audience into a complete command module hatch. Savage must have truly missed life as a TV star, because it didn't take him very long to settle back into yet another series. This time, he doesn't have to share the limelight, and his name is even in the show's title, called Savage Builds. The series airs on Discovery Channel and follows Savage as he, well, builds stuff. The show launched big with an episode featuring Savage building a flying, bulletproof Iron Man costume. Savage 3D printed the suit out of titanium, then he shot a gun at it to prove it was bulletproof. Then he enlisted the help of inventor Richard Browning, who's famous for building a working jetpack. And yes, the suit could actually fly, although Savage himself wisely decided not to be the pilot after he had some trouble mastering the whole jetpack thing. Browning made the test flight, and it was pretty impressively successful. No word yet on when the duo plans to start fighting crime. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite TV stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.